say all these this and preachers are bad too. We have to just reserve it. We have to the preachers who are not ministers from different churches. We really appreciate them. We lean on them. I don't know if you realize how much we, we do in the Bible. The Bible says that there is safety in the multitude of counsel. It's so thankful for the devil brothers that are sitting around us here this morning. Once you continue in prayer for the service tonight, this new brother has fed my soul already this weekend. We're expecting a little more of it tonight, another, another, another service. So we pray for this brother. I'm not sure who's first tonight. I'm going to mess up with Tom here, whoever did the play. Let's pray for this brother.
was founded and the godly nation has turned its back on God. Yes, and I'm telling you what, he said he'd judge any nation that forgets God. Yes, and our nation has put him on the back burner as sure as I'm standing yes, here. Every law they make now is against God. <laughs> there might be a few of us resting here that's following him and he may, he may for our sake hold things a little while, but it's going to get worse just right out in the future. It's going to get worse. Yeah. But I know that God will give his people the victory no matter how bad yeah. things get in this world, no matter how, how, how bad the storm rages in this life and how much divine judgment will come down upon us. I know that our God will give us the victory. I know that he already has give us victory. And if we'll hold on to it, he'll see us all the way through. I'm glad God ain't a God that just throws us to the side when but when we do wrong, but he's faithful and just to forgive us yes. of every wrong that we yes. ever done. Uh, my friend, listen, I worry about our people uh, all over this world today. We just want to read that. I uh, will let it go already. I got made fun of last night. I uh, to read a little bit. Uh, uh, my friend, but I'll just uh, follow this spirit and see where it goes. Uh, uh, but I begin to think about uh, our people in our churches uh, all over this land and country. Uh, uh, Brother Rod, uh, I've been with some today. Uh, uh, they've been church before. Huh? Uh, they've been back out. Huh? And they've been back in. Huh? And now they're back out. Huh? Uh, we've worshiped with them. Huh? And we've walked with them. Huh? Uh, but today I smell beer huh? on their breath. Huh? And I begin to wonder. Huh? And I begin to worry. Huh? And my friend and my mind begin. Huh? But it comes to me now. Huh? About a man one time. Huh? He was head and shoulder. Huh? Oh, my God. 
seed. There's a deceiver in this world. And his sole purpose is to deceive, but to rob and to steal and to kill the soul of men and women. But my friend, listen, and he works his hardest in the old church. They try to present in our minds the us that are saved. He'll bring every doubt. Christian, and 
and told him if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out. Oh, Brother Roger, it scares me to death. Oh, my friend, I look back to my life, and I believe they've been time that I was just a lukewarm a Christian, and it scares me real bad. I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to be spewed out. I want to be found.
sweat over some of you that you may wash and you may cleanse. Oh, yes, I believe there's power in the blood.
And each one of you individually are allowed to be your own official to worship the way you want. And to be king over your own soul and to do with it what you will. But today, he stands. Church will forgive you. If you're down in the dumps, be real careful and make sure you ain't letting the devil push you on down. Yeah. He'll come by and act like he's the Lord and dress himself up real good, and he'll just keep twisting and yeah. pushing you down. Now let me ask you something. If your kids do wrong and you chastise them or whoop them, are you going to just keep beating them to death? Why well, no. That was one of the hardest lessons I ever learned. I finally said, Lord, this is Jesus whooping me like this. This is no good. Jesus has whooped me and want me to grow. I would whoop me. I took a switch to him. I'm, and I would again if he was willing to need it. I ain't worried if the switch won't hurt him. There's a lot of church people like, oh my goodness, don't do that. <laughs> Brother, if they ain't whooping, you better whoop them. Yeah. If you don't whoop them when they need it, you don't really love them like you, the Jesus said you should. Amen. Amen.
Brother Tommy mentioned about a king. You know what they said about that king? They had judges before, and they never had a king. And the people kept crying, give us a king. Give us a king. Does that sound like what we're going through in this nation now? Give us someone. And I'm, I, I don't care what your politics is. I don't care whether you're a, a crab or a Republican. I don't care what you are. But I'm telling you, this is what people are doing. And, and as he said, it just keeps getting worse. And, it, and you know what God told him? He said, if I give him to you, he'll be a hurt to you. Yeah. He tried to warn the people. Does he not try to warn us today? If I give you a king, he'll take from you. He'll take your land. He'll take your family. And he's done exactly what they said. Right. 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 We better be careful what we're wanting in this world. Yeah. Yeah. We better be searching out God. And I look about God. There's a remedy for being in the wrong. There's a remedy to be in the right. There's a way to get out of it. There's a way to be delivered. There's a way to be redeemed. And it's in Jesus today. We don't have to stay in this room. We don't have to feel bad. And listen, I know the world's... Hey, listen, if you watch the news and, and look at all the problems of life and you, you get uh, wrapped up in that, you will be discouraged. But Lord, if you get your nose in a book, you'll be lifted up. Yeah. Oh, there's life in it. There's hope. Yeah. There's a better land than what we live in today. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I got scriptures I want to look at. Uh, it's, uh, <coughs> it's too big for me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I do this all the time. I, I read in the scriptures, and uh, I don't know about you preachers. Have you ever just uh, get started on something that just gets weights so of it? You just can't do anything with it. You just get out of it. I find myself more and more every day doing that. And oh. Uh, You know, you ever had, listen, I say, let me ask you this question. Just bear with me. Give me just a moment. I, I'll try to get that. Listen to me. I want to reason with you. He said, we want to come to reason together. Let's reason tonight. I want to go to heaven. And I believe you do. But what you've got to be convinced that you want to give up this word. Let me ask you this. Uh, now, I don't know that your family, they might be the, you know, there's a, there's a thing called a will or inheritance or, or something like that. I don't think I'm going to get much. But, <laughs> but a lot of times people get a big, big lot through those contracts. They're, they're really, it's just a contract what it is. Yeah. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a testament to, and we get into that. <laughs> but it's what it is. It's a it, it's a it's a agreement, a covenant, or a will is what they call it here in this world. Right. If you was willed, how do you know you're going to get it? I'm asking you that because they record it, don't they? Yeah. They write it down and they record it. And they place it in a in the uh, uh, county house uh, or wherever it is, and they they establish it and and it's the, they make it law. It's law. You're going to get it. I'm going to be put a on it. That's right. And uh, in this world, that's pretty good. They think that's great. And when it comes time, you go claim it. And you can get what he said. Exactly. <laughs> if we only left Junior five dollars and left me five million, Junior gets five, I get five million. That's the way it is. Yeah. Get settled. But listen, though. Jesus, Jesus made a covenant with the church. First, I want to go back to this king. This king called Saul. You know what happened? You know, after all the evil and all the wrong he done, now he was placed in a high position. He was in charge. Right. 
But brother God took him out. And God called a little lad down yonder that nobody thought would be king. That's right. Even his father didn't think he was. That's exactly right. When he sent the man of God down there to uh, Jesse's house and uh, he uh, Jesse went out to all his sons and uh, he brought them through. I believe he does what he thought was right. He brought the, maybe the biggest, the eldest, the strongest. He brought him through. He marched them all through. And the prophet of God said, ain't there one more? Well, yeah. I got one more little lad. He's down there watching the sheep. Boy, ain't he in the right place. Around in the right place. He went down there at the courthouse getting all the details. And he went down there getting all the papers brought up. But he was doing what the father wanted him to. He was down there watching the sheep. And God brought him through. Now, Brother Tom, Hey, listen, I've seen them. Hey, listen, I've been in court, too. And you know what they've done with some of them seals? They just tore out. They said, well, it was signed wrong. It was dated wrong. Yours was outdated. They didn't do it right here. Or they didn't crimp it right. Hey, listen. But, boy, I'm glad to know when the Father, not
but it's over on the other side. Tell me what it was all about. 
Here he was, limp, <laughs> hopping around. Oh, when he slid up to the king's table, he looked just like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I might not look as good as you, and I might have had a rougher life than you did, and I might have been meaner, I might have not been. But it don't matter, folks. <laughs> what the good thing about this contract is, he makes me right. He makes you right. He cleaned you up. And he set you at the table. Listen. <laughs> brother, I'm telling you, the king even called for a robe <laughs> and put on him boys. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> no wonder David, <laughs> the boys, when he <laughs> was not worried out. The brother and our old Saul was down there in his little back tub. I want to show you how good and how important and how much God will take care of you if you're in the wheel. If you're under the contract, let me show you what he done. You know what David said? He met a lion one day. He met a bear. Israel had backed up. But he said, I think there's a cause here today. And there was a giant defiled Israel. And brother, here was a little lad. That's not very big, ready lad it said. I believe he looks kind of rough because he stayed in the field with the animals. Oh, and he went down to that little brook. They done tried all the contracts of this world on him. They done tried whatever thing they used and all the stamps that they had. The king even gave his armor to him. And he said, this uh, uh, will not do. I've not proved it. It ain't what I need. I got a contract. He didn't say that more, but I'm saying that. I got a contract that God will go with me. He will deliver me. He did when the bar come. He did when the line come. I'm a little afraid of this Philistine, uncircumcised giant. For there is a God. smooth stones. I went down and went before the giant and he slung one of those little stones and hit him right between the eyes and slew him. Yeah. You tell me God won't stay with those people that's in his contract. He, the giant made mockery of him and yeah. told him what he was going to do. Yeah. And David done just what the giant said. Brother God will stay with you. He's got this here for you today. It's for sure. You want to say, how do I know I can make it? He said you can. That's right. He wrote it. He wrote it for you. He's got it wrote down. He's got it put in your heart when you come and give your life to God. You know what? Not only him, but others. I mean, the three Hebrews, how did they do? They, they went right down into the fire. They had a contract with God. They knew. They said, okay, we are not quick to answer thee. We know what kind of power you got. In other words, I'm, man, you can take my life. You're the king. But I want you to know one thing. It don't matter because I've got a contract. He didn't say that. That's what I'm saying. He said, it doesn't matter. We know our God will deliver us. Yeah, yeah. Amen. He went right on down, boys. He went right on down. Daniel went into the lion's den. Now, you know that. You don't think Daniel, he recorded me if writing, and he got up there and said, there's a rock higher than that. You know what he was doing? He's looking at the God, boys. He realized he had the contract. Yeah. And then, the old apostle Paul, he wrote right down into the penitentiary. Him and Silas. Boys, let me tell you now. You get some of us put in jail and you'll hear a bunch of complaining. That's what we'll do. Yeah. If we was preaching the gospel now, be careful, brother. Don't say yet now, but I want to start lying on you. We'll get started. Well, why'd they do that for? Why they put us down here? You know what Paul and Thomas do? They began to say something. Yeah. 
I'm supposed to start singing and praising God. You think you're pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I got my contract. <laughs> they, they know. They know God would deliver them no matter what. God will deliver you. He will do what he said he would. That's right. He will do yeah. what he said he would. You trust him. Yeah. yeah. Peter, even the church didn't even believe his contract. He was put in prison. The angel of the Lord went down and woke him up. He was asleep, boy. <laughs> woke him up and took him on the outside. And then, where'd he go? He went down with the rough contracts. <laughs> He didn't run down there to the world and go on. He went down there where the church was at John Mark's house. Right. Started knocking that old angel said, there's Peter out there. What's the matter with you? He's in jail. Now you've got to realize there's a contract here. God made that covenant. Yeah, praise the Lord. I'm using the word contract. I'll just put it down with the term to make you understand. But listen, I had this. How close are you? I had a, you ever had a debt you couldn't pay? What makes you feel awful on it? You really want to be good in life and don't pay your debt. What makes you feel bad? I realized I had a bigger debt than money owed to somebody in this world. I had a debt that I couldn't even pay. I didn't have enough to pay with. Money wouldn't buy it. Money with my friends, had, had a whole slew of friends, or I thought I did. What would not Would take care of us? That's right. Had cars and had houses, had land. It <coughs> wouldn't take care of it. But then there was a man told me what would take care of it. Jesus told me one time, he said, there's a man owed a hundred thousand. And that's no thousand pence, a hundred pence. He said to him, I should forgive them both. He looked at him and said, Who do you think loves him the most? The Lord, sure, the man. He forgave them both.
Praise the Lord. You can be part of the family tonight too if you want. We'd love for you to meet the term. <laughs>